once the slide is done, you can place it in the blackberry juice and let it sit for a specified amount of time. I put it in there upside down to make sure the dye gets nice and coated. So one of the ways you could make this a variable is you could try different, con different dilutions of juice, one being 100%, 50%, or 200% if you wanted to reduce the blackberry juice at home and bring that solution into class. We will not have the, the time to do that in class. We can use different dilutions of blackberry juice as a variable. We can also use different types of juice as a variable. Some juices you might want to consider would be cherry juice, blackberry juice, raspberry juice, strawberry juice, carrot juice, tomato juice, beet juice, spinach juice or pulverized spinach. There's lots of different sources for the material. So I've had my cell soaking in the blackberry juice now for 30 minutes. That should be ample time for it to soak up the solution. So we pulled the slide out of the blackberry juice, rinsed it off with distilled water, and gently patted it dry. It's got a few minor imperfections, but it won't matter in the long run. You make sure you notice which side is black coated with blackberry juice. So we've made one side of our cell. The other side, the carbon side, is now going to be used and we're going to apply them together. So it works well to put them on top of each other, offset slightly, and tape one side so that you can hinge it open to apply the iodide. So I connected the slides with tape and then I hinged them back open so they can open and close. I also rubbed a small portion of carbon off the far side of the slide where the electrode is from the multimeter is going to connect so it gets a good clean connection. The next step is to apply the electrolyte. The electrolyte is another source for a variable. We are currently using iodide, but other electrolytes could be researched and found, and I believe there are some that work better, but they're more expensive. It only takes a very few small drops of iodide. And then carefully close the cell and wipe off any excess that squeezes out. Make sure not to smear the carbon too much because it'll rub off. If you don't want to get iodide, which stains your fingers, you can wear gloves. In fact, it's recommended. <laughs> Once that's done, we'll put a binder clip on the other side to hold it closed, and we can go out and test. So we've closed the, the cell, carefully rubbed off the iodine without cutting ourselves on the glass edges, so be very careful or wear gloves. And you can see we've offset the cells on each side so that the conductive glass, a small portion of conductive glass sticks out each end. Now I can conduct alligator clips to each end of the slide, which then can be conducted to my multimeter. Now you're ready to go test. I suggest testing outside in the bright sun. So it looks like this slide is generating 0.7 millivolts of electricity, but we're also doing this inside with very little light. The best option is the sunlight. But if that's not available, try using an incandescent light bulb. So you can also try other bulb types, like a fluorescent bulb, and you may get different voltages based on the wavelength of light. Here we can see with a fluorescent bulb, good, good. Uh, you can't see it well. We're generating 30, 40, 39 millivolts. So which it means other types of light might include a black light for other wavelengths of light. On the larger cell that was made a few days ago, we're able to still get voltage out of this cell. So this cell is able to generate 0.3 volts using the uh, fluorescent light bulb. A few of these would light an LED. So I hope you've come up with lots of variables today for your Gretzel cell project and are prepared when time comes 
make sure you bring in your materials necessary. Thank you for watching.